Hi, this is the second of three STP Creator videos for non-MyOB users. In the first video we covered creating the dataset file. In this video we're going to cover the first use of STP Creator. In the third video we'll cover using STP Creator for your second and subsequent STP reports. The first thing to do is click on Permanent Dataset and on this screen rather than creating because we've already created it in the previous video we're going to click browse to select our other dataset file this is the dataset file we created last time click open and it will ask for our credentials and as you can see the payer information is here our 23 STP fields are here our five payees are here we don't need to do anything else on this screen, we just click save and close screen. Brings us to the main screen and as you can see step one is now shown as completed. The next thing to do is click assemble year to date data. When we first open this screen it is empty and similar to what happened with the payees we've got two options. We can add or we can import export. The best approach is to add one record manually and then export and import, same as what we did with the payees. So I'm going to do that. Click Add. Now, when you add an entry manually, what you'll get here is a, a record ID. We're saying must be unique, use default, so we can use 21. The note here says to add a new year to date entry, enter record ID, select STP field name, select payer ID and set year to date total then click update so we've got the record ID the first entry we're going to use is employee gross and the employee we're going to report on or the payee is Mary Jones and the year to date total from our payroll records is 4822 and click update and as you can see that entry has now been added so we're going to close this and back on the main year to date table we've got this one record employee gross Mary Jones now you could continue and add manually but as I said we wanted to illustrate the probably the easiest way for most people is to add that one export which is what we'll do now and uh, this time it's called year to date data export so we're going to click save and now we're going to switch over to Excel and open that export file I'm going to bring the Excel screen in across from another screen click open and we need to change this again to show text files and there's our year to date export file click open click next tab delimited next finish and what we have here now is the contents of that export file just increase this screen size a little I want to particularly highlight these entries here because As you can see, this export file is pre-filled with the STP fields that we've selected from the STP table. As employee gross, employee tax, super guarantee, we added, remember, car allowance, meal allowance, and we also have not reportable here in case we need to use that. Just want to point out this note here. During import, these first 23 rows will be ignored. Start data in row 24. We can see in row 24, this is our exported entry that we entered in STP Creator. What we need to do now is to add the other year to date entries down here. I'm going to pause the video and come back shortly. I've now completed filling in these year to date entries. What I want to do before going through this is just move this off screen, go back to our STP Creator, just going to save and close this. I'm going to go back to the data set menu. I forgot to point out that when doing the year to date you need to have the payee ID so it's useful to come here and copy this table and paste it in Excel or something so that we know the IDs for each of the individuals. So for example Stuart Taylor is ID 5, Mary Jones ID 1 etc. So you need to know this information when completing the year to date data. So I'm just going to save this, go back to where we were, and this is back to where we were, this one entry, 
and I'll bring this back in. So what I've done is I've added, copied and pasted from employee gross to here, employee tax. So I entered all of these five STP fields for each person and then I just copied and pasted down here so we had all five of them for each employee. For Mary Jones, which is ID 1, I added her year-to-date totals from our payroll records. For pay number, pay ID 2, I added their entries, 3, 4, 5, etc. I want to point out two things. Car allowance, employee number 4, Sue Smith, didn't get any car allowance, got a zero there. For Stuart Taylor, there's no meal allowance or car allowance. Put them as zeros. Just want to point that out because you see what happens when we import this. The other thing I want to point out is for some reason this came in as ID number 21. They have to be unique so I've just used 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now there is a duplication here, 21, 21. Um, I did that deliberately just to highlight what will happen. You'll find that what STP Creator will do if you pay attention to employee gross for Stuart was number 21 uh, and employee tax was 22, we'll see what happens when that's imported. But once we've got all our data in this spreadsheet, what I want to do is first save it as a Excel file. And the reason for that is because this will be useful for future use. It saves us exporting the data again but next time we do payroll, we can simply open this spreadsheet, put in the year-to-date totals, and import that. So I'm going to save this as a import template. It's in our STP data folder. Save. So that saves it as XLS spreadsheet. I'm now going to save it as tab delimited so we can import it. So we need to select tab delimited from here and I'll get rid of the word template but it is our import. So click save. We'll get a pop-up saying that this document contain, may contain features that are not compatible. Do you want to keep the workbook in this format? You have to select yes and then we can close Excel. You want to save changes and no because we've just saved them, and then I'm going to move this off screen. Back at STP Creator, it's time to now import. Warning telling us import will replace table data. That's fine. We we're bringing Mary Jones employee gross back in. Click OK. Select the year to date import. Click Open and it brings in automatically all of the payee details, year-to-date details. Now, I just wanted to highlight number 21 was Mary Jones. The table's now been sorted in order, and 22 is now... What happened to... No, okay, Stuart's gross pay. Stuart's gross pay is now 23. His employee tax is 20. Two, and his super guarantee is 24. So what's happened is it's substituted and changed these around to avoid a duplication of 21. So it's not the end of the world if you do duplicate the numbers. The software will accommodate for that. But what you will notice is the zero entries, the car allowance for Sue and the car and the meal allowance for Stuart are missing. That's because we're excluding zero amounts from this table. If you go through all these amounts you'll see that we've got all the year-to-date amounts for each payee in this table, 22 entries in total, and we can now save this screen. Number two is now showing us completed and the next step is to click on assemble W1 and W2 data. On this screen the first thing to do is select the first day of the pay period. So we're reporting from the 14th of May until the 20th of May and our pay day is on the 22nd of May. 
On this screen we need to enter the W1 and W2 amounts. Now W1 and W2 have the same meaning here as they do on your business activity statement when you're reporting wages and withholding. W1 stands for total salary, wages and other payments, it includes allowances, and W2 represents amounts withheld from those payments. So from our records we've worked out that for this pay week our W1 amount was 2154 and our W2 amount was 321. So we enter those amounts here just make sure that dates are correct and click OK. We can now see number 3 is completed and for the observant ones you'll notice that assemble lodgement data is now enabled. Previously this was greyed out. So let's go on and click assemble lodgement data. Okay, We have a, an alert or warning mentioning that Stuart Taylor has a value for, for termination date however this STP field is not selected. It's also saying the termination date is not in this pay period should he be included. Stuart was the employee who worked for us in July and was uh, then left. We need to, in order to get our year-to-date totals correct, in order to get all our single-touch payroll in order, we need to report on everybody who was paid this year. So it was correct that we included him, but what we haven't done is added the termination date as an STP field. And so let's go, go back and do that. I'm just going to close this. This is our lodgement table. We'll come back to this. Well, I'll, I'll point out, sorry, I will point out that at the moment we've got the date of birth and we've got the pay period and the pay period end, but there's no field showing termination date. Now, what that message was telling us that there was a termination date for Stuart, but it won't appear here. So let's just close this. We need to go back to the permanent data set. STP fields is a termination date. We need to put a tick there. Click OK, click Save. That's still completed. We don't need to go there again, but we do need to repeat this step because the status has changed. The dates stay the same, but we need to enter our amounts. 321. When we click this again, we'll see this message saying the termination date is not in this pay period. Well, we know that because this is our first STP report and we're doing a catch-up. So we can ignore this warning, click close. And now what we can see here is next to Stuart Taylor, there's a termination date column now appears and it's showing that we are sending to the ATO a statement that uh, he's been terminated on that date. Now because this is an employee who was terminated this year and we've included him on our first report but we don't want to keep including him in each report so what we're going to do is put a final indicator this column here is saying final end of year pay indicator it's, it's not the end of the year but for Stuart we can finalize his payment summary in effect by adding a final indicator so to do that we tick Stuart and any other employees who've been terminated and click final indicator. And what you can see has happened here is that's now changed to true. What this means is the ATO will now recognize that this gross tax super are the final figures that we'll be declaring for Stuart. His payment summary or his income statement if he logs into MyGov will say now it's tax ready and he'll be able to use it to complete his tax return. What we'll do for subsequent reports is we'll remove Stuart from our STP reports but we had to include all the employees that have worked with us this year in our first report in order to get everything up to date. Okay so we, what we can do is just check all the figures make sure everything's correct that the gross tax super car allowance meal allowance all ties in which it does now W1, W2 amount is correct and once you've done all your checks and made sure everything's correct you can lodge this report. Now, before doing that I just wanted to, I'll, I'll just centre this a bit better, 
just go through some, what some of these other fields are. On this screen we've got this update, no W1, W2. Now an update event is uh, different to a pay event. Today we're reporting a pay event because we're reporting payments we have made during this week. Sometimes we can send also a, an update event and that might be where we've, for example, we've made a mistake, we've lodged this pay event and now we want to resubmit it. We don't want to duplicate the W1, W2 amounts, but we do want to update the year-to-date amounts. And that's when we use an update event. The other time we'd use an update event is at the end of the year. We can either finalise each employee on our last pay, or if we process our last pay in June, we've got up until 14th or so of July to issue our payment summary. That's what we used to do in the past. And so what we've got the opportunity, we've got two weeks or whatever extension we might get from the ATO to submit our final indicator, which is the same as issuing a payment summary. So after we've done our final pay in, in June, if we didn't indicate all these were final because we wanted to check all our figures and do our, all our reconciliations first, we can, after the end of the year, send through an update event, simply updating or correcting any amounts and setting a final indicator to true. That's what you use that update for. Full file replacement. If we've sent a report through and we've realised there's serious errors there, we can either correct it next time because all we're sending through is year to dates and so next time it will be replacing what we've sent previously. Or we can send a full file replacement and that means that replaces in, in its entirety our last STP report. The ATO will ignore the first one we uploaded and we'll use this second upload as a full file replacement. Here we've got a button called show all STP fields. At the moment STP creator is only displaying the fields we've selected and that's why we got that message about the termination date. This field didn't appear until we had selected it for STP. What we can do if we click on here is it will suddenly show all the fields that are available, all 90 or so of them just if you want to see what's there but normally we say just unhide or hide TFN declaration if we received a TFN declaration during this pay period and we want to report that to the ATO we'd simply select the employee for example Sue Smith and click TFN declaration complete all the details from the TFN declaration that she has provided such as the employment type resident non-resident claiming threshold etc etc the date it was signed and then click OK. That will then send through these details to the ATO. That's what you do to report a TFN declaration to the ATO. We're not doing that here so I'll just click cancel. Final indicator, we've already been through that. That's to indicate that this is the final, all these figures are correct and it's the final for this employee which is what we're doing with Stuart Taylor here. At 30 of June we'd need to do that for all employees. Reset final indicator, well if we've set someone incorrectly as final, for example if we ticked Sue and marked her as final and realised, hang on, we've, we didn't want to do that, we can just reselect her and reset it. So it just changes it back to, to false. So in this case we're just finalising Stuart, which is correct, so what we need to do now is click Lodge. This brings up the declaration where we need to declare that it's all true and correct and once you've ticked that you get a sign in box. I'm going to click sign in. You need to enter once this sign in screen pops up. We need to enter our login details with single touch. Because you know you need to create an account with single touch in order to send the data through. sign in. If you see this pop up, just click retry and now we see successfully signed in and now what we see here is this button send has been lit up. I'm going to click send. And here we go, we've got a message saying status success, the pay event has been submitted to the ATO, email notification will be sent. You can copy that if you like. 
is basically telling us we've now completed this SDP report and we can sign out. Successfully signed out. Close this screen, which brings us back here. On this screen, I forgot to mention, there's also a save image file. And what that is, is it saves an image file, a read-only file of all the data that we've just used to compile this report. I would recommend you save the first few until you are sure that you're reporting everything correctly. Make sure that all the figures are correct. Make sure the totals that you're sending through are correct. Save this image should you need to review something later on. So we'll just click Save. It gives it this unique ID and that's what that's the ID that will be used by the ATO to identify this STP report. If we need to send a full file replacement that's the ID we need to use. So I'll just click Save and Close. And that's it. We've now completed our first STP report. Before Closing this file though, I just want to go back to the permanent data set file, to the payees, and you'll recall Stuart Taylor was terminated in July. So what we want to do is exclude him from future STP reports. To do that, we click here and go exclude from STP, and now the figures for STP have dropped down to four, and we click save, save and close. And now, next time when we are ready to do our next STP report, we no longer have to report for Stuart Taylor, and we can remove him from those year-to-date amounts, etc. We'll cover how to do the next STP report in, a, in our next video. Thanks for watching.